All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how one agency helped a uh, local healthcare practice become national going from a thousand visitors a month to close to 213,000 visitors a month, uh, so able to start selling uh, all sorts of digital products and put in a, a telehealth practice. Um, and we're gonna talk about how she overcome like the risk of focus, how they shifted from office content and they got a lot of the content out of the office and onto the website. And um, the fact that just SEO is not dead. Rebecca, thanks so much. I'm excited to talk about this. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. And don't forget this is brought to you by videocasestory.com. As we'll talk about, one of the best places to start with your SEO is through your client stories. Go to videocasestory.com to learn how you can get stories that rank in the number two most used search engine, YouTube, plus improve your sales, marketing, and all other efforts. So let's get started. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your agency and then we'll talk a little bit about these results that you got. Yeah, I started the agency. It was actually my husband's brainchild and I did a lot of the execution um, a little over three years ago. I had worked in house and as a freelancer doing a lot of SEO content and Essentially, I had a few freelance clients that we saw kept turning into the same issues. And it was, I have a writer, but I don't have an editor. I have someone who knows SEO, but I don't know who can write the content. And so we realized that if we kind of did a turnkey system where everything was ready when it got to your inbox, that it might be a, like a viable product that we could grow and, and, and sell to more clients. And so we started out that way in 2019, early in the year. Um, we slowly kind of developed over time to not just content production, but a lot more like strategy. And then we got into like some technical SEO and basically our whole thing has remained to be very focused on. We want to help you get found on Google by people that are relevant clients, customers, patients, whatever. Um, we work with a lot of people like in the health and wellness industry and yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. I love growing it. Nice. Nice. And so tell us a little bit about uh, the results you got for this, it's a healthcare practice, right, in Denver? Yeah, so we were contacted by um, a functional medicine practice out in Denver. So they work with a lot of people on reversing like chronic conditions that are typically considered like irreversible, but they've had these like incredible stories of, hey, we actually help people reverse hypothyroidism or diabetes or like their autoimmune whatever. And so um, when we first kind of chatted, I realized that, Luke, who's the practice manager there, was really into, hey, we want to build a bigger brand because local SEO is great if you just need patients nearby. But uh, what they really wanted to do is build like a national following so that they could do more in terms of, you know, practices in other areas, launching digital products or writing books, things like that. And so we started on this incredibly small content schedule with them, only two, like two articles a month. And honestly, that is not, I don't even recommend that level to new clients anymore because it can really help be accelerated if you do more. But that was just what their budget allowed for. And we just talked about the options and what to expect. And he said, hit the ground running. And so they've taken a ton of our advice and it's been really cool. But the, the awesome results are they have literally grown for over two and a half years. They've been working for us. I don't think that they haven't grown month over month, at least once. When we started with them, they had about a thousand page views overall per month. Uh, in the last 30 days, they've had just over 213,000 page views per month. And like I said, every single month, we're kind of like seeing that grow. And they're now able to launch some digital products. They're in the process of their primary uh, MD is looking at writing a book. And uh, they also, it was a cool story at that time. I think they had about 70,000 ish hits a month, um, right when COVID started and in the three months before COVID not expecting this, obviously they had built this really complex, uh, telehealth medicine system out, um, because they had, that's how they wanted to work with their clients. And so <clears throat> when COVID hit a lot of our other healthcare clients were contacting us going, Oh my gosh, like we can barely make the bills. You know, people aren't coming to the doctor. We don't know what to do. Meanwhile, this one client of mine was like, we have so much more work than we know what to do with. It was just like right place, right time. And so the whole brand has just really benefited from pushing SEO so much. Awesome. And so let's talk back. I mean, you said they had a thousand views, a thousand page views a month when you mm -hmm. started with them. Yeah. Um, so, so how did, go ahead. I was just going to say like most of those were coming from like patients 
either finding them for local search just within their area in Colorado, or like they would direct people to their website because they have a few like things. So like existing patients were even looking at the site, but it really just, it wasn't like new client or new, you know, patient inquiries and things that were the majority of that, just the little number. Wow. And so, you know, you walk in, how did you create this plan? Um, I started by asking what their most compelling stories were about. Um, we talked a lot about like the patients they'd seen healed of things that honestly, I mean, if you've gone to a doctor and heard that you can't recover or like be cured of something, and then somebody else says you can, and then they successfully help you do that. That's mm -hmm. pretty compelling. And so, yep. um, we started talking about the conditions that they would had had the most success with and like with reversing. And we ended up landing, I think on hypothyroidism first, um, Hashimoto's is like an autoimmune hypothyroid disorder. Anyway, they've had a lot of success with that. And so we just started building content around this one area of hypothyroidism. And we really just built from there. And then over time, we had additional areas that we started focusing on where they'd had, you know, other client successes, or they really wanted to focus on patients in these areas. It was hard to, to the convincing them to stick with one area for at least six months at a time in terms of content, that was difficult because they work with patients that have anything or are just working mm -hmm. on their health, you know? Um, so that was one of the big risks that they took with us. Cause I know that that's a little scary to be like, yeah, but we don't only talk about one thing. We want to talk about all of the, you know, these things. So it was really cool that they were able to, you know, trust us enough to let that happen. And, and it worked, you know? And I, you know, I think it's great because I always tell clients, I mean, a video case, when we do video case stories, I'm like, you start every marketing campaign talking about your customer stories, right? I mean, it, it, it makes sense. And so as you start talking about it, you saw these hyperthyroidism and Hashimoto stuff, what stood out to you? You know, how did you start to see the content strategy inside those stories? I think that a lot of it just came from recognizing that all not all now, but a lot of content around like say hypothyroidism is really focused on the exact same things. All of the articles about treating this, that, or the other have all of the same lists of answers. Like everything was very samey. And so I actually had several video chats with, um, the lead MD there, Cyana, and we basically just talked through, and I was like, talk to me, like I'm a patient, you know, talk to me through, like, what would you go through and figure out you know, the root causes of what I'm dealing with. How would you address that if that happened? You know, and we started getting through all these things and I discovered all of these things that really had either search volume around them or were a part of something that people wanted to know that were unique to the content around this area at the time. Um, and so we started talking about like, how can we actually use patient stories and actual successes? Because if you read all the content that I was reading from all these other sites, everything was just the same. And honestly, it was clear that none of it was really like looked at by somebody that's a specialist in this watching. <laughs> happen. So we started trying to figure out how to, to incorporate all of that within to the content within the content. And so as you start to do that, you know, obviously SEO, it's a long game, but you still have to get results. Yeah. Um, how, what were the first times you knew that it was working? Um, I think that we actually, this is, I like sharing stories of, not necessarily failures, but missteps as well. And so that leads into it really well. Um, when we first started out, I was trying this uh, format of, I, depending on who you talk to, some SEOs call it different things, but I call it like a you know hub and spoke model where you write about one topic area and you have like a cornerstone and you have to have like the really important pieces. So with hypothyroidism, we like wrote this like really comprehensive article on hypothyroidism. Then we did a really comprehensive article on like treatments for hypothyroidism. But then we started focusing in on the things that made this client unique and the stories that they had with their patients that were unique. We started talking, we actually did an article on how to cure hypothyroidism permanently, which by the way, 6,000 people a month are searching for, right? Like that's not a little number. And we ended up ranking them in the top spot way faster than we had any success ranking for any of the other articles. And we started realizing if we kind of take it from a patient perspective first or client perspective first, they had people in their office that had the same questions. They had the same concerns. And I was like, well, why don't we meet those people on search 
instead of like waiting for them to come to your office, let's just meet them when they're searching these things on Google. And literally every time we've done those kinds of things, um, it just takes off really well. And we have some of the more like kind of traditional areas of content we write about, but a lot of those things are the ones that struggle to rank more. Um, but we've written a lot of articles that have to do with like their nutritional advice for hypothyroidism or the other conditions, or, you know, there's one, we also write about a lot of IBS stuff for them. And there's one random keyword that gets a, several thousand searches a month about honey and IBS. And they were like, well, you shouldn't take, you shouldn't eat honey. If you have IBS, that's like their recommendation. And I was like, okay, let's write about that. Let's be contrary to everybody else and see what happens. And we also, I'm pretty sure they still hold the number one spot for that keyword as well, like two years later. So that's amazing. And yeah, that contrary take is important because it stands out yeah. and it gets people to read the whole thing too. As you've developed this, I mean, 1,000 to 213,000 views a month, that's quite a bit of a change. How has, I mean, they now have a national presence. You said they're doing digital products, but can you tell me a little more detail of how their business has changed? I think one of the coolest things we got to see at first was with the initial bumps, probably through like year one or so, they were able to bring on like double the number of practitioners to their, to their practice that they had had. And so when I started with them, it was, you know, a doctor practice manager. And I think they had two providers that did other things and their, their practice now has something like, I want to say like eight, seven or eight providers. So it was really cool to see them initially be able to just kind of grow their local practice quickly in that way. And then over time, the funny thing about this is with this particular client, they honestly, they like knew that they wanted to have this larger presence, but they're not really familiar or comfortable with like how digital marketing works. So they've deferred to us for a lot of that. And so as they've grown, we've realized like, Hey, now we have to like build an email list. I know that like, you know, that's new to you, but like, here's what that's going to look like. And we've given a little bit of direction and referrals and stuff for them over time with that, because that kind of plays into, Hey, this traffic, you have to take traffic and do something with it. And like our job is the traffic part. Right. And so it's been kind of cool too, to have a little bit of a, an influence on what do you do with it once it gets there. And so, um, We've also helped write some of their digital products and things like that. But yeah, I know, I don't know, you know, obviously I don't have access to all their numbers. Well, I don't know if that's obvious, but I don't know all of their numbers, but I do know like they've been able to grow their staff and also just they're, they're kind of open to whatever right now. And they actually have the budget to really like go after some things that would have, would have not been a possibility in the past. That's amazing. And that's all through organic SEO. That's that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And if people say SEO is dead, SEO is not dead, huh? Those people are <laughs> SEO is morphing and transforming, but it's definitely not dead. Uh, yes, that's awesome. Awesome. Rebecca, well, I mean, this is a great story. Well, this is fantastic. And so what's the best way to get in touch with you all and to follow you, Rebecca? Yeah, so our website is just clara.agency, C-L-A-R-A dot agency. Uh, we've got, I have like a discovery call Calendly just embedded on our homepage. So if you want to schedule a call with me and talk to me about some stuff, uh, it's available right there. You don't even have to call me first. I'm totally cool with it. Um, I am pretty active on LinkedIn and Twitter. So um, my handle on Twitter is Rebecca underscore creates, R-E-B-E-K-A-H. And I think it's the same on LinkedIn. I need to check, check and make sure but my full name is Rebecca Edwards on LinkedIn. So that's uh, a lot of what I share there is actually like educational about how I do content and SEO, a lot of how we've been successful for people in the past and, and things of that nature. Awesome. Awesome. And make sure to check Rebecca out, connect with her on LinkedIn and follow her. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. And thank you all for taking Rebecca and I on your marketing journey. This has been I and Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show.